and welcome to the show. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, and it's a pleasure to be here with financial instructors, Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are with the Retirement Education Foundation. And throughout the show today, well, number one, you're going to hear a lot of great insights and strategies, tips on retiring successfully in the 21st century. But there's more to it. We want to make sure you have a full education when it comes to your retirement. And what's great is the Retirement Education Foundation sets out to do just that. So we'll be telling you how you can get registered for the upcoming courses that the foundation sponsors right here in our community, either in person at local universities or in the comfort of your own home. Kirk and Paul, it's great to be back with you. I want to talk about something that I think we could classify as part of this war on seniors and savers, and that is low interest rates. This is causing a pretty big challenge right now for retirees or even soon to be retirees, right? Megan, yes. And it's great to be back. And and you nailed it. The war on seniors and savers. And and Paul and I and the instructors at at the foundation at the charity have been talking about this in classes for a long time because there's been a war on seniors and savers for a very long time now with these low interest rate environments. Retirees are struggling to find, and I shouldn't say retirees, just retirees, but retirees and professionals are struggling to find solutions for to provide income in retirement without taking on excessive risk. This has been a challenge, and it's really turned the financial service industry upside down. I mean, we're seeing commercials all over the place on, on radio and TV now talking about income planning all of a sudden like it's new. Well, right. <laughs> it's been around a long time, and it's really turning up upside down the industry and all of the cookie cutter, one size fits all rules that they've been using for a very long time. It really is about a world of an old playbook. Unfortunately, most advisors still using versus this new world in new playbook, low interest rate world and people living longer. How, how, how do we manage this? And to manage it challenge, Paul is it requires a lot of planning. There are so many more levers in retirement that most people aren't even aware of. Heck, most people in our industry aren't aware of all these levers, right? Their whole value proposition is we can help you choose investments. Well, (laughs) investments is the easiest part. You had 40 years to choose investments and grow your money. It's now about distributing your money. And how do you make sure that you don't either underlive what you otherwise could spend or outlive your money? What are the strategies in, in And unfortunately, they're still fixated on the investments and risk tolerance. That's it. There's nothing else. Right. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that old playbook. And I would say, you know, I think you would agree that the current interest rate environment that we're all in has only made that old playbook even more uh, antiquated. It's only made it that much more outdated, right? Oh, it it fails. It fails consistently. And, uh, you know, uh, the problem is oftentimes people don't realize it fails it fails them until it's too late, right? You know, people wait to the day they retire and then they're using this old playbook and guess what? It's, it just doesn't work. And for many people, it means not the retirement they want, right? Not, not, you know, basically emotionally never really enjoying it without constantly being in this fear of where, you know, constantly worrying about will they have enough. And, and that, that's because most people just don't plan. And that's why this class is, you know, the course we teach is so important. Paul, the 60-40 playbook is dead. I would encourage people just to Google it. I mean, that's the yeah. old playbook. The 60-40 playbook and that 4% rule no longer works. It's not an opinion. When we run those Monte Carlo simulations and back test it, that strategy that people are still using and promoting fails 30%, almost 30% of the time. So what do people do? The pivot for our industry is either take on more risk or live on less or work longer, which are crazy. There's better solution. Just requires individualized planning custom to your situation. And that's what we teach in the class. We teach you about all the different levers and there's a lot of levers and when and how to take income from the right accounts at the right age. So you both don't outlive your money or underlive what you otherwise could be living on, which unfortunately a lot of people do. So if you'd like to register for one of these classes, we teach them at all the major universities and we're streaming them online. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend. You know, Kirk, you said something a minute ago, which is, you know, if you follow this, these simple rules, 
oftentimes what happens with people in retirement is, is that they don't have enough. And then, you know, our industry basically encourages them to do one of three things. And you, you said those quickly, right? One is just spend less, right? Do you, is that really what your goal is in retirement is to start spending less or two, take more risk. We're going to talk about that makes no sense. Or three, work longer. Well, I hate to say it. Number one, you may not want to. Number two, you may not have a choice, right? We don't always get to choose how long we're going to work. So you said a lot there, and I know we're going to be tackling a lot of those topics today and why we have low interest rates and what happens when rates rise. But I think it's really important, Paul, that those three things that you said is the solution today. There's a fourth. They're they're going to tell you to take more risk. It's a solution that people are telling them. Yeah, that's the solution people are being given today, right? right. And so here's the problem. So we see this almost every one of our shows now, every week, is... Most of the people attending our courses and listening to this show, our fear isn't that you're going to outlive your money. Our fear is you're going to way underspend what you otherwise could be spending because you are anxious and scared and fearful, vulnerable, especially as you get older, especially when someone else isn't paying you a paycheck every two weeks. You have to pay yourself your paycheck every two weeks. We say it in the class too, Paul, right? We say it all the time. Older people aren't cheap. I know you might have thought mom and dad or grandma and grandpa were cheap. They weren't cheap. Well, maybe they were. (laughs) But it was more likely that they were scared. They didn't. And they're scared because that's what the industry, financial service, and the experts have told them to be. They've told them to adjust their spending and their lifestyle based upon what's going on in short-term market events. That's not freedom. You worked 30, 40 years serving money grinding so that you could retire and have freedom and live a lifestyle you want in retirement. And unfortunately, most people don't. Look, in your retirement years, four to seven times, you're going to have a major market event. And if you're allowing those market events to change when you retire, whether you go on vacation, whether you do a home improvement project, or what you spend and when you spend it based upon someone who's being elected or a market event, well, then you don't have freedom. And you're, you're following an old playbook you don't need to. There is a playbook in which you don't have to ever change your spending patterns if you know where and when to take your income from the right accounts. This is what we teach in the class. If you'd like to register for one of these classes, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. We want to encourage you, if you haven't done so yet, now's the time to act. Pick up the phone, get registered for the foundation's courses. These are educational events, a real deep dive into what you need to know to successfully plan for your retirement. Two options. You can either do a two-day course or a one-day course, and you can register either by phone, 800-240-8981, or simply go online. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. Here's that web address again. It's retirementplanningedu.org. Kirk and Paul, we've been diving into interest rates. We know that they're low, and this can present a problem. And The two of you mentioned something that I want to follow up on. You said that sometimes these environments can cause people to underspend in retirement. What do you mean by that? Well, I think, Megan, part of the the, the problem and one of the things that's why the classes are seven to eight hours in length is there is just so much to unwrap about what the industry is doing wrong for so many of uh, baby boomers and what are all the different levers you need to pull to get the best outcome for yourself, right? And so one of the problems is, is that our industry, the foundation, the foundational planning for retirees today is built and created based upon the average baby boomer. And the problem is, is everyone thinks that they're average and you're not. So I think it's helpful, Paul, if we explain the average retiree today will retire with $200,000 saved for retirement. That's average. You've saved $200,000 for retirement. So, candidly, some of these general rules probably are appropriate for someone who has only saved $200,000 for retirement. If that's what you have, 
then you probably should adjust your spending when we have back bad market events. You probably should protect your principal. You probably shouldn't take more than 4%. And maybe you should work longer if you have to. And maybe you should work longer if you have to. But I can tell you the people listening to our show, and I can tell you the people attending our classes, many of these people have saved a lot more than $200,000 for retirement. So therefore, you're not average. And these rules aren't going to, they're going to cause you to way underspend what you could be spending because you're using planning philosophies and rules that were built and designed and utilized for someone who only has $200,000 saved for retirement. You have more resources, you have more levers to pull, there's more freedom and there's more things you can do to maximize and create a lot more income. So so I think what you're saying, Kirk, if I can help here, is, is that our industry does a really poor job differentiating, right, what a plan should look like for somebody who is average, saved a couple hundred thousand dollars, and for someone who has significantly more, right? They use the same rules regardless of how much money you have. And so the problem is their solutions are great for people who are saved a couple hundred thousand, but they don't work for people who've who've saved a lot of money. And oftentimes what we find, going back to Megan's question, is those rules make people panic. And all of a sudden the market corrects, interest rates are low, and people tend to react to that market event by spending less, when in fact, if they just planned correctly, they wouldn't have to spend less. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't matter the market environment when you're taking money out as long as you have the right accounts to pivot to when you have market events. It's about knowing, it's having the right type of risk profile in a particular account. And depending if market is up, I pivot to one. If the market is okay, I pivot to another. If the market is bad, I pivot to another. And if the market is really bad, I pivot to another account, right? And so Did you hear all that? So I can tell you in our private practices, it takes us 40 to 50 hours for every single plan we build for our clients. Now, it's a little unique. We ran run more of like a family office where we employ CPAs. We have attorneys and the advisor working in conjunction with one another to construct their retirement plan. It takes 40, 50 hours and there's five or six people involved in every plan. And it's it's months. It's a process. And here's the, the, the real challenge, and I share that because I know so many of you listening have saved your million, two, three, four, five, six million. You have an advisor that knows how much wealth you have, so therefore you assume they're going to construct a plan and give you solutions based upon the net worth you have. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that that is not the average net worth of most of their clients, and I'm sorry to tell you the barrier to entry into our industry is very low. It doesn't take much to be an advisor. Typically, these are very good salespeople who are good at building relationships, and that's why you like them, because they're good at connecting with people. Doesn't mean they do planning. In fact, it's not profitable for them to do planning. The whole industry, the the, the whole value proposition of the financial service industry is choosing investments, which takes very little time and is super simple, honestly. I'm, I'm just being honest. They don't make money if they spend time planning. It's an industry, Paul, built on a transactional business model. They want to meet as many of you as they can, as quick as they can. So they come up with simple, one-size-fits-all solutions. I don't care if you're worth 200 or 5 million. It's going to be very similar. The investments might look a little different, but the strategy of your income and when you take it is going to look very similar. And that's not going to give you the outcomes you want, Paul. No, it's not. And, and But sadly, most people are listening to our show today, yep. right? Most of these people who are listening have advisors who've probably told them that, you know, you need to adjust your lifestyle based on ec- these external events. And sadly, <laughs> I guarantee you there are people who are listening who actually are already in retirement who, when the pandemic hit, panicked, panicked either got out of the market, stopped spending, tried to get a job, didn't retire, didn't retire. And at the end of the day, how sad is that? Because they didn't need to do any of that if they simply would have done what they needed to do. And they had advisors who were actually doing what they needed to do to help them. Yeah, Paul, I think it's it's, people are overconfident, unfortunately, in the advisor's ability to provide them retirement solution. And there is not very many people doing real advanced retirement planning that gives you all the levers that can even they don't even understand the levers and so 
one of the, the pr value propositions of the charity, why we started this charity, was to educate people on what advanced retirement planning looks like. So you may not, some of you may come to the class and be able to learn how to do this. It's unlikely. It takes us 40 to 50 hours. And I, we have over 100 years of experience sitting here in our classes, in our private practice. But you'll at least know what the levers are. You'll at least know if the people you're talking to or looking to talk to to get help from, if they're giving you the right answers, the right solutions, because you'll know all the levers. You'll know conceptually what you should be getting. So that's the value proposition of the course. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, seven, eight hours of education in all the universities, and we'll stream it to you in your own home if you want. All you have to do is go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back. Much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. This is the Retirement Education Hour. A great conversation going on right now with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. We're glad you've joined us for that. We're talking about low interest rates today. And that's just one of the topics that comes up at the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. Now, these are courses, as we've told you, they're right here in our community taught at local universities, big universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. And if you'd rather not attend in person, well, we have a great option for you. You can also attend virtually. That's right, in the comfort of your own home. Now, these are your choice, either a one-day intensive eight-hour course, or you can split it up over two days, $29 to attend, and that is a donation that goes to charity. So here's how you can register. You can either call 800-240-8981, or we make it really easy for you online. You can register that way by going to Retirement Planning edu. Dot O-R-G. Now, Kirk and Paul, we've been talking about low interest rates, and we know that when it comes to young people, low interest rates are a great thing. Retirees, on the other hand, not so much. How could this potentially set some people up or trip them up, I should say, present some hurdles for people down the line in retirement? So you mean Paul and I are going to get off our soapboxes and stop talking about all the things the service industry are failing to do when it comes to planning and actually talk about the topic of interest rates? If you don't okay. mind. Okay. <laughs> Megan, I got it. I got it. Good. So, yeah. So, you know, we've had low interest rate environments for a long time. And, and the, the challenge is, you know, fixed income is the bonds are, are a little bit confusing for people because – there is this idea that when interest rates start to fall, that people are losing money in their bonds, and it's really the opposite. When interest rates are falling, the bonds that you own become more valuable. They're worth more money because you have a bond that's paying you a higher interest rate, right? So as those new bonds come out that are lower, paying lower interest rates, your older bonds are worth a lot more money. So now the problem we have is we have had low interest rates for a very long time now. And as we begin to see, so there's two challenges. So if you own bonds, you're earning nothing right now, literally. I mean, you're, you're, you're not even keeping up with inflation. You have a negative real return by owning most bonds today. So that's, that's the first problem. The second problem is when we start to see interest rates rise, the value of the bonds that you guys are owning are going to go down. You're going to actually lose money in your bonds, which for about 30 years, Paul, that wasn't the case with with bonds. There wasn't a fear as much about losing money in bonds. Everyone was making money because bonds were going down, interest rates were going down, and the values were going up. This is why, right here, because interest rates are going to go up. And if they don't, you're just going to earn nothing. So when interest rates go up, you're going to lose money. If they don't go up, you're going to just lose money. Right, right. <laughs> right? I, 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 so, and I, hold on one, one second, because I want to be careful. I don't want to suggest we're anti-bonds because... We manage a lot of individual bond portfolios, muni bond portfolios, but that is very different than most any of you listening are doing. Most of you own bond funds. It's a whole different world, Paul. I know we're going to talk about it, but I think it's important that people understand this isn't our anxiety or our fears, or we're not making a prediction. It's every major bank and firm out there who is suggesting that over the next 10 years, if you own the 60% stock, 40% bond portfolio, which is what every advisor is telling people to do when they retire, 
you're going to earn 3% or less over the next 10 years. That's the projected forecast of a 60-40 portfolio by J.P. Morgan, Barclay, Goldman Sachs, Morningstar, all of them, right? Right, for sure. So, uh, you know, you, you said something I think is really important for people, and they, I don't know that everyone's going to understand this. It's important people understand that most of the listeners, they're sitting around thinking, well, I just – why would I lose money if I don't sell my bonds, right? <laughs> because I, because there's truth. If you don't sell a bond and you wait till it matures, you're not going to lose money. I mean you lose money because the interest rates are so low, but you're not going to sell it at a discount. And then you said something that people need to understand. I would say 95 plus percent – 99% of the people listening – for actually sure. don't own individual bonds. So you all need to understand, you all own bond funds. And when you own a bond fund, those bonds within that bond fund are actually being sold multiple times in one year and, they're, and, and you have no control over it, right? One, if I could say one more thing, yeah. one of my fears is that, so, so how, how are advisors dealing with this? The average advisor is saying, okay, well then let's just, t- you know, let's, let's buy bonds with longer durations or bonds that, you know, longer uh, define longer duration, longer maturity, longer maturity, which is more interest rate duration is interest rate sensitive. The right. higher the duration, the more you're going to lose when interest rates rise. Right. Or they have bond funds with a lot of junk bonds in them. High yield, high yield. Yep. So my concern is, is that people are taking greater risk in their bond funds. And the average person doesn't even understand that. That's, okay. my, that's my concern. 100 percent. That's happening a lot. Yeah. You want to know the other thing that not the average Invest, uh, 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 advisor doing, but All. the expert advisors, All. like the yes. Susie Ormans, the Dave Ramseys, the Jeremy Siegels, the people that you guys are following and reading and think they're they're talking to you, but they're talking to the average retiree that only has $200,000 saved for retirement. They're not talking to you. They shouldn't be talking to you. They might be, but they shouldn't be. And they're, so they're, they're, what they're doing is they know the 10-year forecast of a 60-40 uh, Stock bond portfolio is going to be around 3%. They know that. that, And that's less than 50% of how it's performed over the last 20 years. Way less than 50%. So they know that. And they know their 4% rule fails then. They have no choice. They either have to do planning or come up with a new rule. And so the new rule is you should own less bonds. That's it. You should have 75% stocks and only 25% bonds. So that means more risk, Paul. Do you know what that means? It, it, it means more trouble. It means when we have a 2008 event, People are in- you lose 43% of your money when that happens. Now, I know some of you guys and gals who think you're disciplined and you won't panic when we have a market correction like we had COVID 2008 or 2002 because somebody was paying you during that period of time, your paychecks every month. You didn't need that money. Your relationship with money, I promise you, is going to change once you retire. And if you portfolio, your portfolio lost 43%, I'm going to tell you you're going to panic. I'm going to tell you for sure. And, by the way, it's going to destroy you. If you're pulling money out of those accounts, you're dead. You will outlive your money. You have a 75% chance of outliving your money if you take money out when we have a market event in the first five years, if you don't have a plan. So these are some of the things we're covering in the course, plus a lot more because it's, it's eight hours. We teach these at all the major universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State University, Oakland University, two evenings or one full Saturday. All you have to do to attend is make a $29 donation to charity. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back in just a moment. Back with financial instructors, Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, and we love to talk about retirement here on the show. Why? Well, there's a lot at stake, right? You've been working your whole entire life to try to save, get to the summit, but getting to the top of the mountain is not what it's all about. How are you going to come back down that mountain? Well, take some planning, and that's what Kirk and Paul and the Retirement Education Foundation are here to help you do. And they do that with courses taught throughout the year. You can take advantage, sign up before the spots get taken, and they do fill up quickly. Retirementplanningedu.org. 
That's the place to go to register. If you'd rather call, you can do that too to register 800-240-8981. Keep in mind, these are courses taught at local universities right here in our area, or you can attend virtually, either a two-day or a one-day course. That one-day course is eight hours long, $29 to attend that admission price. It goes to charity. And Kirk and Paul, I've been enjoying our conversation about low interest rates. I know it's on the minds of a lot of people saving for retirement or newly retired. But, you know, when you look at old playbooks and, you know, we could talk about the loss that the Lions had to the Ravens not too long ago. Talk about. Oh, God, (laughs) really? Well, talk about a playbook you don't want to replicate. Right. And when it comes to retirement, there are some old playbooks we need to just throw in the trash and not revisit. Let's talk about those. We need to be aware, don't we? We do. And, and here's the problem we're having. The industry, the financial service industry is, is, you know, I feel like all we do is bash, but it's a sales business. I mean, that's what it is. They're, and the people you're meeting with, they're, they're salespeople. That many of them couldn't manage a portfolio sincerely themselves. They've got other people doing it. They, the, the, and the whole, all the, the big firms, all the big firms, right? They're it's about the bottom line. Many of them are publicly traded, so they have to f- create scale. Scale meaning something that is easily replicated and done multiple times over and over and over and over again because that is the most profitable way to run a business. Scalability is profitability. So the challenge for all of you is we are in a different environment we have been actually candidly for the last five years than we were the previous 30 years. The, the low interest rate, everything is so different today than it was over the that past 30 years, particularly for retirees. We have a war on senior savers with low interest rates. You can't make any money. We have an interest rate that will go up at some point. It's going to go up. I'm not here to predict when, but when it does, those of you who own bonds are going to get crushed. You're going to lose money because Very few people actually own individual bonds. Like Paul explained, they're owned in bond funds. And those bond funds are buying and selling all of those bonds multiple times every year, typically on average. And so you're going to lose money as interest rates rise. And this this isn't our fear. This is well published. This is well documented. Everyone's talking about how the 60-40 retirement plan, that 4% rule, is now dead. It just can't be used anymore. But we we end up having, Paul, two things. We have the camp of people that are still using it and telling you, protect your principal when we have bad market events, spend less. That's terrible. You work your whole life so you can die with the same amount of money as you retired with. That's what protecting principal means, by the way. That's not right. That just gives it easy for them. You'll self-regulate. They don't have to do any work, the advisor. Okay? And the second is take more risk. Right. Can I just give a statistic? I mean, we keep saying the 60-40 playbook is dead. Yeah. So I, I read recently Morningstar warns that over the next 10 years, this is an incredible number. I mean, it just put, it puts flesh to what we're talking about here. That over the next 10 years, a balanced stock bond portfolio, 60-40 yep. balance, will generate after inflation about a half a percentage point before fees and taxes. That means you're earning a half a percent. How, I mean, if, if, that doesn't, if that doesn't explain how dead it is, I don't know what. It's way it, dead. It, it, it's dead, right? So then you said something. Which is, okay, if that's dead, what else are people going to do? And what people are hearing, take more risk in the stock market. And why is that a problem? Well, because the market is up 500% since the exactly. bottom of 2008. Exactly. Stock prices are rising way beyond earnings. Yeah. It's way overvalued, right? Way overvalued. Well, do you, you know the motivation for the industry to tell you the Ormans, the Ramsey, the Seagulls, all of them, why they're telling you to take on more risk and do 75 stocks, 25 bonds? Sure. Because now they can back test using your probability of, of, of outliving your money or not. They're called Monte Carlo simulations. You, many of you have seen the dials. Now if I have a 75% stock, 25% bond portfolio, you can still take your 4% and you'll only have about a 10% chance of outliving your money. Just disregard, just forget the fact that we are all emotional and our relationship with money becomes even more emotional as we get older more confused, and oh, by the way, someone else isn't sending me a paycheck every week or two. Forget all that. Forget the fact that 35% of people over the age of 65 panicked in March during COVID. 35%. And and most of those people had the 60-40 
allocation. They panicked when their portfolio was 60-40 when we had COVID. 35% of people over the age of 65. So what's going to happen happen when it's 75-25? They're setting people up to fail. Right, right. What they're doing, and this is what we said early in the show, they're setting people up to way underspend what they otherwise could spend if someone would just build them a custom individualized plan and know the different levers to pull and when to pull them. So I think, so what you're saying is the difference between 60-40 and 75-25 is People are going to see way more volatility in their portfolios, right? Yes. That's the bottom line. And at the end of the day, when you're not working and you don't have a paycheck and you see your portfolios highly volatile going up and down significantly, it is so difficult not to react emotionally, not panic. Well, one of two things. That's when mistakes happen. You're going to react. Going to react. They they told you to react. The, The coaching is, the playbook is spend less. Well, that's so stupid because when you're 70 two years old and you have to start taking required minimum distributions, you don't have a choice. You have to take it. When you're 80 years old, you have to take almost 6% a year out of your retirement accounts. Whether the market's up or down, doesn't matter. So one of two things are going to happen, Paul. People are going to panic and sell. And I know a lot of people don't think they will because they didn't before, but they will this time. We know it. 35% did at COVID. One month they did. Or they're going to not spend they're, every time there's a market event, which will be four to seven times through your retirement years, every time there's a new election, you're going to spend a less. You don't like who's being elected. I'm not going to spend money. Right? That's crazy. You spent 40 years to amass your wealth. Like, you want freedom in retirement? Have a plan and know no matter what the market event happens, you have an account you can pivot to that you don't have to change your lifestyle. That's freedom. Set yourself up to succeed. Educate yourself. All you have to do to take a seven to eight hour course at any of the major, most every major university is you go to, uh, you have to make a $29 donation to charity and you can attend the class. You go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And there's more straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Back with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Kirk and Paul are financial instructors, and I want to make sure that you are aware that throughout the year, they are teaching you, our audience, about retirement planning. And we're not just sharing bits and pieces. Kirk and Paul are dedicating hours with you to help you understand what's at stake here in the 21st century when it comes to retirement planning. It's no longer your grandparents' retirement. There are a lot of moving parts that you need to be aware of if you want to retire successfully. So get in the know. Go to the website. Get registered for a date and a location that works best for you. Simply go to retirementplanningedu.org or here's the phone number to call, 800-240-8981. Write that number down. It's 800 240 Eight, one. Interest rates, low interest rates. That's what's been on our agenda today as we talked through this. What's at stake for you as a retiree or maybe a soon to be retiree? You know, in this area, Kirk and Paul, we have to be very mindful of our listeners who have pensions. They're trying to make that decision with their pension. Should I take the lump sum? How do interest rates figure into that decision? Everything. I mean, it, it's everything. So Paul's going to give a statistic about how underfunded pensions are right now and how staggering that is. And we're not going to make any predictions on how that might impact your future income. You guys can do the math and figure it out for yourself. I think you really need to think about that. What I can say for certain, because we have retired, I don't know, in the last two years, maybe a, a hundred plus people in our private practice and taught thousands of people who had to make the decision between taking their pension versus their lump sum, particularly in the automotive industry, you're out of time. You need to come to a class tomorrow. There's changes that are going to be occurring to your lump sum. The the lump sum benefit for many people, those people who are fully vested already, your lump sums are going to start going backwards now. They've gone forward big time. Over the last three years, we've seen pension lump sums going up 25, 30, 35%, depending on the companies. Significantly, the corporate bond rate is the main variable that drives your lump sums, pensions, from going up and going down once you're fully vested, right? Once you've been there long enough. And so we had the lowest corporate bond rate 
ever recorded for th- this entire for last year. It was recorded last year, and it priced for this year for everyone who took the lump sum. They saw significant increases. Well, they just posted the August number, and it's gone up. And it's gone up about 40 basis points or just under half of a percent, which is going to cost all of you, if you don't retire and start your pensions before the end of the year, it's going to cost many of you, depending on the company, the timing, and a number of different variables, it's going to cost you 4 to 6%. Your lump sum will reduce somewhere between 4 and 6% on average. So if you have a million dollars, you're talking about 50000 less if you don't get yourself retired before the end of the year. And this trend is going to continue. Interest rates are going to keep going up. And as interest rates go up, for every 1% interest rates rise, you're going to see your lump sum go down about 10%. That's about the number. So you got to consider that on deciding whether or not you have enough and you're ready to retire because that's a major, major variable that I know Paul and I are worried about. We've been teaching. We have a webinar. Go to retirementplanningedu.org on our website, and you'll see the webinar. We walk you through some uh, some plan examples, taking pension versus lump sum, and the impacts of why the variables, the levers, all the levers that impact this decision. Yeah, you know, so – People obviously have choices, right? They could choose the lump sum versus take the pension, right? And you just talked about how people, you know, who are taking lump sums are going to really be hurt as interest rates continue to rise. So, you know, the average listener may say, okay, well, then I won't take the lump sum. I'll take just the pension. I mean, I'm actually amazed that this is not being talked about more. But, you know, these pensions are significantly underfunded. We're talking about 4 to $5 trillion. And here's the thing. So, so you wonder, so what is the connection between interest rates? You would also wonder, hold on, you'd wonder why they're so far down with the market being up so high. Exactly. Why are they still why losing they, so bad? And here's the thing. Most of these pensions, about 25% of the, these pensions are using government and corporate bonds, about 25%. So now let's go back to this low interest rate environment. Yes. So, if, so two th- if pensions were underfunded two, three years ago, now imagine what's going to happen when 25% of these pensions are using corporate and bond rates where they're basically, as you said earlier, paying nothing, right? These pensions are going to have significant problems going well, forward. Well, th- that 25, 23, 25% of their portfolios that are in corporate and treasury bonds yeah. are going to go down. That's right. They're going to go down as interest rates rise, right? Right. right. So this is after uh, the be- greatest bull run we've ever had. We're still way underfunded. Do you realize that these corporate... I mean, these pension funds are allowed to use. I think it's. I think it's somewhere between seven and a half and seven and three quarters is their projected forecasted growth rates. Yet, <laughs> major firms are using three four percent. Somehow they're able to use this. So, so they're really underfunded. And we don't want. To, look, there are a lot of reasons to make. Uh, there's a lot of levers you got to understand. Taxes, taxes on Social Security, taxes on your IRAs and your four hundred one ks, in the amount of forced income you're going to have to take out of these accounts. These are all variables to help you factor whether you should be taking the lump sum versus the pension. And it's not cut and dry for every company. But for most companies right now, lump sum makes a lot more sense for most people in most cases, only if you know what to do with that money. You can't go stick that money in the stock market and play gambling with it. But Paul, I'm telling you, yeah, this is this is why we have a segment. We do a TV show, and there's a segment called "They Say." They say everything they say is wrong. <laughs> okay, stop listening to they, which is your friends, your coworkers. There's a major TV station, local TV station, that we've retired. I think six people from here in the last year that has a lump sum pension option. And one of the major anchors, probably one of the biggest anchors in this town, is telling everyone to take the pension. And in their case, these people are losing not a little, a lot of money by taking the pension. They should be taking the lump sum. You can recreate your own pension, insured and guaranteed, and it's going to give you a heck of a lot more money with a heck of a lot more tax favorability. But this is an influential person in the community telling everyone, take your pension, take your pension. They say, be careful of they say, <laughs> come to a show, I mean, to a class. That's why we spend eight hours to help you filter out they says, help filter out everyone who thinks they're an expert that makes these general suggestions and rules that you think you should be doing. There's so many mistakes that people are making because they're listening to the wrong people. So this class gives you some of that filter to know what's applicable and what makes sense or doesn't make sense. 
to attend one of these classes, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back. There's more with Kirk and Paul right here on the Retirement Education Hour. Happy you've been with us today for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside financial instructors, Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. You've been listening to Kirk and Paul talk about low interest rates and how these could affect your retirement, not just saving for retirement, but also living in retirement successfully. Kirk and Paul are with the Retirement Education Foundation. And as you know, the foundation sponsors courses throughout the year, courses where you can take advantage to understand in a deeper way what it takes to retire successfully in a modern retirement. Get registered. Don't delay. Call 800-240-8981. These are in-person or virtual classes. Your choice. You can also register online at retirementplanningedu.org. Let's talk about what it takes to get a plan together that takes into account these low interest rates. How do people navigate through this successfully, Kirk and Paul? Megan, I wish people could hear our segments in between our, I mean, our, 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 our discussions uh, 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 in between our segments. No, I don't think we really want that. <laughs> if you only all heard what Megan just said, it was really funny. Yeah. <laughs> so we're all a little giggly right now, but um, it's not a giggly topic, honestly. This is the key, right? The key to having an effective retirement, freedom in retirement. I just, just think all of you who are approaching or early in retirement. You've worked 30, 40 hours, right? So You worked 30, 40 hours? I'm sorry, 30, 40 years. Thank you. See, you guys got me all flustered. You have been working for 30 to 40 years to save enough money to retire. Retirement should be about freedom and not worrying. You spent your whole life worrying. You shouldn't have to worry now. This should be about free. You have other things to worry about as we age, right? We all know that. Not our money. So it starts with a plan. And we say it all the time in our private practices, we spend 40 to 50 hours to construct a plan. And that's what we're teaching in the classes. We're going to teach you what a 40 to 50 hour plan looks like, all the levers that are involved. How do you forecast what your future potential tax liabilities are and then work backwards to find the most efficient way, a truly holistic retirement plan, understanding where do I take income from which account at what age to be able to navigate and reduce the chances of outliving my money, minimize taxes, and reduce the chances of underliving our money, which is probably what we see more than anything right now because of using bad cookie cutter plans and this low interest rate environment's got so many people scared that when there's market events, they they allow short-term market events to drive their spending and life decisions. That's not freedom, Paul. No, it's not. And and this is why I think this topic while it's a bit depressing, right, is so important because really at the end of the day, this is what the class is about, right? Really, the class is really about helping people create, learn, learn what does it take to create a retirement plan so that whether it's low interest rates, whether the stock market corrects, right, it really teaches people how to ensure that they have that peace of mind, that freedom that you keep talking about in retirement, regardless of whether interest rates are low, regardless of whether President Biden or President Trump or whoever gets elected, right? At the end of the day, it gives people peace of mind. And at the end of the day, that's really all people want, right? Really, people work really hard so that when they retire, they can do what they want. And, you know, this low interest rate environment really has created a lot of anxiety in people and it doesn't need to. The key, though, is learning how to really find somebody who or do it themselves, how to build the type of retirement plan they need. Paul, you said something and it's it's something that's that, that people connect with after spending eight hours in a class. It's your relationship with money. You've spent your whole life serving money, growing money, so you have enough for retirement. Put your kids, raise your kids, put your kids through school. Once you retire, it's not about serving money anymore. It's about letting money serve you. And the only way you're gonna really be able to let that money truly serve you effectively is by first educating yourself. It's not the investments that drive performance. I promise you folks, I know that's the value proposition of the whole financial service industry. And I'm telling you something different than everybody else is. The investments you choose is not what's going to give you success in retirement. It's what investments you take your money from and when that's going to drive performance, returns, 
how long your money lasts, how much you can take out. It's how little you pay in taxes that's going to allow you to take more money out so you can enjoy your retire better or reduce the chances of outliving your money. The investing part is super easy. There is no secret sauce or any voodoo out there that anybody has. I'm telling you, no one can sustain success Stock picking and market timing, no one ever has. 40% of mutual funds fail after 10 years. Paul, it's just yeah. the fact. So so I, I want to I leave people with some hope, yep. okay? And we've spent really a lot of time talking about how horrible things are. And I think at the end of the day, it, it's fair to say that even though we have this low interest rate environment, even though the 60-40 playbook is dead, even though the stock market in the future doesn't look that great, at the end of the day, and, and people say this all the time, at the end of the day, at the, when we teach this class, people walk away feeling like if they do what they need to do, they can have the best retirement they need. There is hope. There are solutions to the things that we talk about in this in this show. There are great solutions. The key is you got to get educated. You need knowledge. You need the tools. And to be you need to... the tools to do it right. And if you do, there is hope. You're going to have the retirement you want. It's important that people walk away understanding that. It doesn't matter if the market's up. Or if it's down, it if it's not really going it to be good, if it's really when it's when it's going to be because it's going to be everything. Interest rates could stay low for a long time. Some people predict that. We don't know. The point is, you don't know. And if your retirement plan is built upon guessing, guessing. and what the market's doing in the short term, that's not freedom. You, you're 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 going to leave tons of money to your kids, and that may be fine. I mean, right? Seventy six trillion dollars is being left by the baby boomers to the next generation. A lot of it's because of fear and no plan. Not to us. <laughs> not to us. <laughs> right. So. This is why we spend seven, eight hours teaching you how to construct a retirement plan and teaching you all the different levers that can be pulled and help you to hopefully be able to find the right person to help you do this because I'm promising you right now you don't have the right people. And we're not talking about us. We're just going to give you the tools to go find the right people. And there's so much to learn. I hope you make a $29 donation to charity and attend one of our eight-hour courses. All the major universities, all you have to do is register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.